Welcome to the RBA Small Business Show. Your number one resource for business growth education, insights, and news. Let's get today's show started. Welcome to the RVA Small Business Show exclusively on the RVA Small Business Network. I'm Corey Mosley, your host for today's show. If you've been looking for ways to increase credibility, confidence, and clarity through executive presence and presentation skills, you're going to love today's show. Joining me today is Diane DeResta, CSP, speaker, executive speech coach, CEO of DeResta Communications, and author of Knockout Presentations. Diane, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Corey. Absolutely. Well, we want to have a master communicator because communication is so important mm -hmm. in our daily lives, particularly in the business world. Now, one of the things you focus on is executive presence. Mm -hmm. I want to get started with defining what that is. Absolutely, because it's one of those things where it's hard to define, but you know it when you see it. Mm. And so when a company says, I want you to work with this person, they need executive presence. Well, what does that mean? Yes. And then I have to figure it out. So maybe this will help. There's some research that's been done by Sylvia Hewlett, Hewlett Consulting, and she defined it as, I think, 67% gravitas, 38% communication, and 5% appearance. Mm. I don't know if the numbers add up, but that's uh, maybe <laughs> off by one digit. Math was not sure. my subject in school. <laughs> But that helped. But then it was, well, how do you drill down? What do you mean? So if I memory serves me, the top two qualities for gravitas were confidence and decision making. Mm. Now, there are others there. But the reason I bring those up is people need to remember the top ones. And also, they didn't change over a period of time. So she looked at 2014 versus 2021. They remained solid, one and two. Under communication, I think it was... Confidence and uh, the ability to get to the point with okay. clarity. And then on appearance, it was polished, and I think it was authentic. I can't remember the second mm. one. So they, again, they, cha they didn't change that much. Oh, no, I, I know what it was. Own the room and the Zoom. So it was different. <laughs> is right. In 2014, it was own the room. Yes. In 2021, it was own the room and the Zoom. So yes. now you need virtual presence. So That's that right. gives you... a. a a snippet of what that is. But basically, when people have the, the conf, not the confidence, but the skills, mm. but not the confidence or the presence, they're, they're not able to be promoted. Mm. So that's when I work with them. Now, let me ask you something. That's in kind of the, the C-suite environment, too, right. right? Well, let's think about the, the small business owner, not necessarily looking for the promotion but they need to move people in the direction to want to do more business with them, to want to do more business with their product or service and their company. So still having this presence kind mm -hmm. of there's an element of owning the room, part yes. of what you're describing, right, before you even open your mouth. Talk exactly. to us a little bit about some of, those, some of those needs there. Exactly. When you enter a room and you're meeting with a prospect for the first time, do you exude confidence? How do you walk in? That's your presence. How do you connect with someone? What, even basic things like handshake and eye contact are critical. And if you think those are minor, there was a study done, I read about it in uh, Harvard Business Review, and it was Erasmus University. They wanted to know why were some entrepreneurs funded more easily by VCs than others. Mm. So they hired actors, they had two groups, the actors were the entrepreneurs, one group used no gestures, and the other group used gestures. The group that used the gestures got more funding. And I thought, that's huh. odd. I wonder why that is. My thought is because when you're using gestures, there's more conviction, there's more yes. confidence, there's more energy, and that's what sells. So all of these things are part of presence. But it is, it's owning the room, having yeah. confidence in the conversation. And Being I crisp, that's really, cre uh, it's really key to be crisp. Crisp, I like that. What I couldn't help but think while you were having this conversation is there's this, you know, be who you are, be authentic kind of idea and movement. And, you know, oh, well, Corey, I'm just not like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the lesson here for you is skills, working on these skills and executing these skills is necessary. No one's saying you can't be yourself. But in that example you just shared, 
if you want to get funding for your business, mm -hmm. there are some things you're going to have Absolutely. to do. If you want to be able to network more effectively, you're going to have to skill up, so to speak, exactly. to do that. Yes? And when people have pushed back on me, I would tell them, they'd say, well, I have to be myself. I don't want to be something I'm not. I'll say, well, let me ask you something. Do you speak to your husband the same way you work, speak to your client? No. Mm. Do you speak to your son the way you speak? No. Well, that's what we're talking about. If you go to a foreign country, you speak their language. So for you to have that presence and confidence and gravitas, you need to enter someone's world and you need to speak their language. So mm -hmm. that means if you're a fast paced person, right. but you're dealing with a quiet entrepreneur, uh, yes. decision maker, yes. then you're going to tone it down. It doesn't change who you are. You're just entering their world, matching their right. energy. Another thing I heard you say uh, in, in watching some of your content is the miscommunication that people have about what presentation skills are or what public speaking is. Mm -hmm. And this idea that you believe just standing in front of a room is public speaking. But one of the things I heard you say was leaving a voicemail Absolutely. is public speaking. Yes, talk, is. talk to us a little yes, bit about that. Yeah, and I just said that today. Yeah, there are so many ways that we show up and a voicemail is a presentation. And it didn't occur to me until I was working one time and somebody said, when you coach my person, would you work on his voicemail? I said, what do you mean? <laughs> well, he leaves me these messages, 30 seconds, a minute, a minute and a half, and I keep fast forwarding. People tune you out. Yes. If you want someone to return your call, listen to the message. So I recommend when it's a, especially a new person, have an index card and write three points hmm. so that you get right to the message. I like that. Yeah, that, that and, and what's so funny is it just opens up another way to say, you know what, I didn't really even think about it that way. I thought a voicemail was just a voicemail. Mm -hmm. Now it can be, but if you want someone to return your call or take some type of type of action, mm -hmm. it's gonna take some skills in terms of your approach. Corey, it's branding. Yeah. It's your brand. Every time you speak, you're advertising yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's all public speaking. Yes, yeah, 100%. Common mistakes. So when we think about presentation, we think about presenters, so many people, I've seen so many people in the in the speaking world uh, say, oh, well, you know, I'm vice president of business development, so that means I could speak and do speeches. But there's a lot of people that make very amateur mistakes when they present. What are some of those mistakes that you see presenters making today? One is not knowing the audience. Mm. And I, I talk about the YAM formula, know yourself, know your audience, know your message. And number two is the weakest. We don't do enough of a deep dive and a drilling down so that you can be really successful in one venue and bomb in the other. Same content, mm. different audience. So that's a major mistake that people make. And then there are the little things. Too many ums. We all have a few, but if you're punctuating your message with a lot of ums and ahs, people lose patience. Same thing with language. I ask people, are you peppering your language with wimpy words or weak speak? <laughs> I feel, I hope, well, hopefully I've convinced you. I hear so many presentations end with hopefully. No, hope is not an ending. It's not a strategy. So what are the, what's a stronger way of saying that? Make a recommendation, not a suggestion. Mm. To, instead of saying, when I have lawyers say to me, we do not know, we don't recommend, and we don't guarantee. I'll say, okay, but you don't have to wimp out. You can say, the data show based on the evidence we project. Mm. All the areas are pointing to. Right. That's a stronger way of saying it instead of I think I feel. Yes, yeah. It's the nuance, mm -hmm. right? It's the nuance in terms of what someone uh, what someone hears and then the action they may or may not take. And I've heard you talk about the ways to use language, mm -hmm. you know, so that you are moving people to the next conclusion of of what you're trying to say. And I think that all goes in that kind of box that we're talking about now, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, playing it safe. Why is that risky? Why is it risky to play it safe in front of a room? Well, I tell people to stop playing it safe in front of the room because the world is changing so quickly and if we don't adapt, mm. we're going to be left behind. And what happens is people default to what they know and they've always done and now it's not working. So right. it, we have to come, come out of our comfort zones. We have to get tech savvy. We have to try things that are different. We have to enter the world of our audiences mm -hmm. and it's changing. So playing it safe yeah. is, is risky. 
Yeah, that's and yeah. it's an interesting, it's it's a counterintuitive way to start to think about it. That mm -hmm. in terms of wanting to get in front of more audiences or really wanting to impact people. Mm -hmm. Now you've got your book, Knockout Presentations. Congratulations, you're in your third edition here. Yeah, so thank you. obviously you're doing something right. And, oh, and something else. It was oh, on the true. billboard of Times Square. Oh wow. That's fantastic. Just, Congratulations yeah, on that. Thank you. That was so exciting. So inside that book, we've uh, we've touched the surface here, scratched the surface a little bit. What are some of the things people will have as a takeaway from knockout presentations? Well, it's been called the Bible of public speaking mm. because it's everything from soup to nuts. And when I wrote this book, I wrote it as a seminar in a book because I thought it's the next best thing to having me there if you can't see me in person. And it's everything from structuring your message, the top mistakes people make, the myths about speaking, how to be confident, how to, I have a whole chapter on fear fixes, getting over nervousness. I have a whole chapter on questions and answers and handling difficult people, mm -hmm. recovery strategies, staging the presentation. And then at the end of each chapter, there are do's and don'ts. So okay. if you're a fast reader and you just want to skim, you can get the essence of that. And then I have templates in there as well. Oh, wow. I think those templates are important because I think a lot of times people get actual information and it's kind of like, how do I implement those, right? Yeah. And it sounds like you're solving for that. For people who are not familiar, this is the first time they're hearing of Diane DeResta, they're hearing your name, even though you're an icon in the business. What... Uh, what would you say about your background? How did you get started? How did your your client list reads like a who's who of, of several Fortune 500 companies? Who's Diane? I started as a speech pathologist. Mm. So I went to Columbia, got my master's, and worked in the New York City schools for about eight years, have the scars to prove it. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. And I, I made a career change, started doing stand-up public speaking training for a company. That was my foray into business. And then I went to Solomon Brothers and Drexel Burnham. I was doing management training and then recruiting MBAs for the trading floor. I realized I liked the work, the pace and the money. I did not like the culture of Wall Street. Mm. So I left and started freelancing with the hope of finding a full-time training manager job. Two years later, I got an offer and I turned it down <laughs> because I liked working for myself. And that's yeah. how it started. So the three basic areas are presentation, interpersonal communication, and media training. Mm, okay, very important. And it sounds like you've mastered all of those areas individually. Who's the ideal client uh, for you? Usually it's a leader, is a, a business leader, somebody who either owns a business or is a CEO of a business or of a, of a company, and somebody who needs to be out there and speak where it's going to really make an impact on their brand. If somebody wanted to get started working with you, how do they do that? They could, I'd say, contact me through my website, deresta.com. Fantastic. Send me a message, and I will get right back to you. I love it. Thank you so much for, for sharing this valuable information on presence and communication. And, uh, again, congratulations on the third Thank edition you. of your book. Thanks so for exciting. joining us today. Thank man. you for having me. Absolutely. For more information on working with Diane and Deresta Communications, please visit deresta.com. This has been another episode of the RVA Small Business Show, RVA's only online streaming video network dedicated to small business growth, education, trends, and news. I'm Corey Mosley, and I will see you next time. This has been another episode of the RVA Small Business Show, presented by the RVA Small Business Network. Be sure to like, share, and join our newsletter at rvasbn.com.